Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Anna. First, I want to say a very big sorry. I know I haven't been posting videos. Um, my summer was super hectic and crazy and so I didn't really have a chance nor was I in the mood to make videos. I do want to apologize for that. I do have a lot of ideas and things um, that I want to put on YouTube. It's just the summer was not <laughs> the summer for that. But I am doing a video now and I hope that you will enjoy it because it's a really nice poetry book and I really do want to give credit for some new poets that are coming out that really do have potential. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the poetry book that I have to show you guys today is called I Can't Tell You by Nathan Levi. And I actually um, found out about Nathan through Instagram. And so he had suggested that I should read his poetry book and I was for sure um, very open and ready to do that and so I obtained a copy of it and read it and I just want to say first off that I think anyone who manages to publish their own work should be celebrated and definitely given all the credit that they're due because it is first of all a very scary thing to put your heart and your soul and everything that you've been through out onto the paper for people to read and second of all um, to open yourself up to criticism um, for people who may not like your work or may think that you know uh, it could be better and so I definitely want to applaud Nathan for getting his book published I think that's amazing we're gonna get right into my thoughts this book is composed of three parts the stirring the heartache and the heartbreak and feel again begin again the first thing I do want to say about that is as I was reading his book I found that the order of the poems was very precise and I really did appreciate that I could tell that um, he put a lot of work into ordering his poems in a way that would reflect the titles of the sections the stirrings it was very it was very nice to see how he took the beginnings of like love and he sort of molded it and um, moved it towards the, the the section that was next which was heart heartbreak and heartache and um, by the end of the the first section you could definitely tell that his heart had been broken and that we were ready to move into the next section it prepared you for the next section and I really did like that it worked kind of like a book in that sense um, or prose in that sense at the second section heartache heartbreak um, you could tell that uh, he was really grappling with the idea of being heartbroken and the pain that goes along with that, which was, you know, very real. I'm sure relatable for a lot of people. Um, and then by the end of that, you could tell he was starting to come out of those feelings and sort of maybe beginning to hope again for maybe new love or a new outlook on life. And so by the time we get to feel again, begin again, you can begin to see sort of the release or maybe the catharsis of, of letting go and sort of learning from the the pain that he's been through and also wishing the person who caused him pain the best um which was you know i thought was very nice he states in the beginning of this book that a lot of the poems that are in here are or were written when he was in high school when he was a teenager um, and in fact and on the back of the book it states that um we're all teenagers when it comes to love which uh, I'm, I may have uh, agreed to disagree and think about that, but that is his opinion and I definitely think that a lot of the things that go on when we talk about romance can be very youthful or maybe a little immature when we are dealing with ourselves. Anyways, um, he does state that a lot of the poems in this book were written when he was a teenager and I do think that a lot of the poems reflect that in the way that um, they talk about love and relationships and heartbreak. I feel um, a lot of the poems are very innocent and sort of youthful in the way that they view the world. Um, sort of like this idealistic version or view or idea of love um, that it was going to be a certain way and something happened and it turned out that it wasn't exactly what he thought it was and sort of moving on to sort of learning from those experiences and maybe having a more well-rounded view of love and, and what it consists of. That being said, a lot of the poems in here I could tell were written when he was older, when he, he um, probably grew up a little bit and, and had a more awareness of what the world is like maybe. And so if that is a problem um, for anyone who reads this, I would just recommend that you stick through it because I do feel like 
if nothing else, it is a very honest look at how teenagers view love. And it may be a little naive or maybe you might think immature, but it is the truth. And I don't necessarily look at poetry um, like that um, critically. I look at it sort of um, sort of objectively in that, okay, this is what this person was thinking when they were this age. And it helps me to get a clearer view of how people view life in certain stages. And I think that's really important to view. I personally, I'm, I'm very interested in how people view things um, in all stages of life. And I find just by observing people that when you're at a certain stage of life, you have a certain outlook on the world. And depending on how your life goes, depending on the experiences that you go through and the people that are in your lives to influence you, um, your worldview changes. Poetry is a really good way of watching a person change. Poetry tends to be very honest and real and um, people tend to express deeply how they're feeling through poetry than I think through anything else. Maybe music would be a similar equivalent to that. And anyways, I, I do appreciate him putting his early work in there. I know, personally for me, if I was writing a poetry book, I don't know how much of my early work I would put in there just because I feel like it would be perceived as immature. But despite that, I do feel like it's important to see that side of a person, to see how where they came from and how they grew up. And I really did appreciate that about his book. Another really interesting and I think really cool thing, I always appreciate this when I see this in a poetry book, is the artwork. There is artwork in this book and I really do like that. A lot of it is um, about plants and I think um, <clears throat> poetry, um, or I should say poets like to use plants a lot to um, sort of uh, portray their work because plants are a great way or just nature I would say is a, a really good example of how, um, or a metaphor I should say, of how we grow and learn and become stronger it's just a really good way of, of expressing the words. Um, I do want to give the artist credit. The artist's name is Mickey Ramirez and just an amazing job with the art and I think it really adds um, a lot to um, Nathan's work and I'm sure that, you know, um, he's very proud of the way this book came out. So there is one short poem that I would like to show, share with you guys just to sort of entice you and maybe um, this will um, encourage you to buy his book and have a look for yourself. Um, I am a procrastinator. I will only stop loving you till the very last second of our lives. And speaking as a procrastinator myself, I definitely relate to that. that that to me is a really interesting way on, on, or interesting take on how to view procrastination. I think a lot of people think of it as a bad thing and it probably isn't a very good thing, but he's turned it around and made it romantic and sweet and I really appreciated that. So um, one last thing about this book, this poetry book, um, in terms of length, it's not very long as I'm sure you can see. Um, it's not, it's not thick, <laughs> but I would say definitely don't let that deter you from getting it um, if you do prefer those types of books. The poetry also is not very long. Some of them are very short poems um, and then there are some um, longer poems and me I would say medium sized like half page poems. I think he actually does a very good job of keeping it balanced between short and long. Um, there have been poems or poetry books that I have read where the majority are just a couple of lines and then you have a blank page. It just depends on preference of whether or not you like that. Um, I personally do prefer longer poems, but I'm definitely open to reading short poems, long poems. So long as it's poetry, I'm, I'm pretty much down for anything. But I would definitely say that Nathan keeps it really balanced and he has a good mix of both long and short. And so for those of you who appreciate either side of the spectrum, you'll definitely find length and lack of length if you want to put it like that um, in his book. You can also find him on Instagram um, by Nathan Levi. I definitely want to promote that. Um, go give him a shout out on Instagram and tell him that you can't wait to read his book. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and if there are any questions or comments that you may have regarding this book or any book that you want to talk about, definitely leave it down in the comments below and I will reply to you as soon as I can. Um, also don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the, at the Poets Corner 46. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.